Yes, I want you to try to. Okay, we're we're here at the course. This is Dr. Garrett Orr, known for his strength around the world, um, and we've got a, a little 3D printed hybrid restoration. That inside of it, I have one of those trilore arch bars. Okay, so this thing is only three millimeters in thickness, and it's used for reinforcing hybrids and whatnot. Really strong material. So. If I was to just try to squeeze this and it was a pure acrylic or 3D printed denture, you could snap this immediately. So, all right, Garrett, now see if you can break this. I might embarrass you on this. Okay, do it. <laughs> okay. okay. That kind of hurts. Okay. So as you can see, this stuff is really strong. This is uh, far beyond anything your patient could do in their mouth. All right, that was a good failure. Thanks for trying. Hey, this is Dr. Corey Glenn, and I'm going to be showing you in this video how to use the Trilore Arch Bar material uh, to make an exceptionally strong uh, implant uh, supported temporary. So if you've done many implant restorations where you immediately load it after placement, particularly the full arch, um, then you know how prone those can be to breaking. Like if you're just taking someone's existing denture and retrofitting it to fit onto these and cutting the flanges off, those are so prone to breaking during the uh, the temporary uh, phase, and you can you know lose the distal extensions. And when they break, they're such an annoyance to deal with. So this is an alternative method that you can use to have a, a restoration that absolutely will not break. I can almost guarantee you. Um, and you know there are even similar means of using this where it can be your definitive long-term restoration but one that's made far cheaper far quicker far easier so i'll try to maybe show that in a subsequent video so we're going to be working off models obviously it's kind of hard to video this uh, on a live surgery <clears throat> so let's pretend this is our patient we've uh, we've done the the let's say it was an all on four configuration on this patient and multis have been put on or temporary cylinders if uh, if you wanted to use those these are actually going straight to the implant level um, these are Biomax implants and just temporary cylinders on there. So once we've done that, the idea is that we're going to use this Trilore arch bar material to directly make a bar um, that is, is pretty much indestructible directly in the mouth, and then that's going to get picked up inside of a shell denture. Now that you could pick this up in their existing denture if you wanted to, if they've got that available. Um, you could also make a 3D printed denture. And I'm going to show in this video, we'll, we'll go over and uh, show how that's done in the software using Blue Sky Plan as well. So for starters on, uh, on this process, we're going to need to trim this bar and pick it up in the mouth um, uh, on top of our cylinders. Okay, we're going to make an in, in the mouth directly fabricated bar. So the way that we're going to start this process is that we're going to take a sheet of heated softened base plate wax. Okay, and I'm just going to fold this up and, and again, pretend that this is in the mouth, right? You've done your, your suturing up around your temporary cylinders and this is the patient's mouth. So we can take this, um, this sheet of base plate wax doubled over. In fact, you could probably even quadruple it over. And all we're going to do is use this as a template. So I take this into the mouth and I'm just going to gently press onto this. The idea being that it just creates four little marks there exactly where my implants are going to emerge. Okay, and then we're going to use this as a template on top of the bar here. So I'm going to trim this up um, just because there's a lot of excess material here. And now I'm going to take just a sharp instrument. Um, in this case, I'm actually going to use just the screwdriver for the implants. And I'm going to press through all the way through this softened wax.
and the last hole. So this marks our implant positions. And now I'm going to grab a pencil And I'm looking at that, I'm too far into the edge here. So let's just X those out so I know not to use them. Flip it over and let's mark it in a different location. That looks like it's a bit more in the bulk of material. Okay, and darken these up just slightly. So this is where the holes need to be made in order for this to drop down over the top of our implants. So I'm going to do that using a high-speed handpiece, and I'm going to turn on my vacuum so it catches the dust. Okay, you see that now we have uh, made our holes to where this thing fits passively over our, um, our implant cylinders. And so now the first thing that we want to do in the process of creating this intraoral fabricated bar is to pick up the cylinders within this. And that will essentially create our bar. So in order to do that, I'm going to place some bonding agent on the trilore a little bonding agent on the cylinders, and then I'm just going to use flowable composite and a light cured pickup. Uh, so let's go ahead and apply that. Really any bonding agent will work. This Trilor Arch Bar material uh, bonds extremely well to both acrylic and to composite, so if you would prefer to use acrylic, you can do that. In fact, for the overall pickup, I will use acrylic, um, but for the small, precise pickup of the initial cylinders, I'm going to use flowable composite. Now these particular cylinders have so much anatomy on them with these ridges that they're going to embed into that no matter what, honestly even without a bonding agent, but we'll put it on there just in case. So what I'll do is drop this on, and you see that the holes are a little bit wider than the cylinders, and that's, n that's because of the lack of parallelism. These are relatively parallel, but they're not perfect, and because of that, your hole uh, ends up being a little larger than the actual diameter of the cylinder. So the goal of this is just to tack it all together, the cylinders and the bar. We're not looking to you know, really reshape the underside of this or add lots of composite. It's just to tack the two materials together. All right. That part has been tacked in, so now we have a bar. Now one thing I would suggest to you is before you remove this out of the mouth and unscrew it, because it's all one piece now, go ahead and draw in the contours of the center of the ridge, okay? 
because you're going to now need to trim this bar down to the actual size it's going to be and this is going to give you the visual indicator of where that needs to be trimmed to. Okay, all four screws are out. With this out of the mouth, now you can tack the underside and make sure that this gets really well cured together and hardened into the, <clears throat> the trilor. And while I'm doing this, I'll, I'll kind of talk about what trilor is. It's a fiberglass reinforced composite. And so there is multi-directional fiberglass strands going throughout this. And it's just incredibly strong. I, I mean, I'm only using a three and a half millimeter thickness. It comes in three and a half, five and a half, and I think seven and a half. I've never really seen a need to use anything more than a three and a half because it is just so strong uh, that there's really no need. This, this ends up being a really, really passive overall restoration because since you are picking these cylinders up, um, this almost functions like a verification jig. And so it minimizes the amount of stress because the only shrinkage that can happen is in this tiny gap between cylinder and um, the trilor itself. So come back now that you have all of that done. Any little gaps in this, you can fill in. All right, the bar is now done, and all that we have to do now is to trim this down to its shape uh, before we do the pickup of the denture inside of this, okay? So again, just big picture, what we're doing here is creating an intraoral fabricated bar that's gonna be very strong and allow us to have a, a good reinforced denture. Um, I'm gonna turn back on the vacuum so that I don't get everything too dusty. So the completed intraorally fabricated trilor bar is now ready. And at this point, there's a couple of ways that you can go. If you're trying to do an immediate restoration uh, where they're gonna leave the, the office right after surgery with some teeth, then you're gonna need some type of a shell denture that fits over the top of this, um, which you can now pick up in acrylic. There is something like this. So all that I've done here is that I created a uh, uh, hybrid basically using our Blue Sky Bio digital denture module and then I've hollowed that so this has um, 0.75 millimeter thick walls on it and the reason that's so useful is because now I can simply open this up just enough to accommodate the trilor bar that we've made. Okay, this is a quick aside just showing how I make the shell denture for doing the trilor bar pickup. Um, you can see here that my master model, I have um, designed just a denture on the top of this. <clears throat> so this is the model and, you know, granted I'm, I'm just doing a model demonstration, but let's pretend there's no implants here yet. You just simply have your master models and design a conventional denture on this. That's all that you're seeing right here. And then once we've done that, we, we set the teeth and I've done a shortened dental arch because this is going to be uh, for a immediate load restoration. And so the teeth have been set and then just a real quick and dirty hybrid has been made. So let me show you now how to turn this into a shell denture for purposes of a trilor bar pickup. We're gonna go up here to file and just simply export this. <clears throat> and what we're gonna export, not the model and not the denture final base, cause that's the one with sockets. This we're going to do is a monolithic uh, and print it all in white. So I want to do this one, which is the base with no holes in it. And then all of the teeth, which are visible on the screen, they're checked on. Let's export this. 
Um, I've actually already uh, done this, but you would simply name this monolithic denture, save it wherever you're saving it, and press save. I'm going to not do that to avoid burning an export because I've already done it. So we've got that done now, and let's now open that, um, that monolithic denture up in Mesh Mixer. Here you see that monolithic denture, um, and again, you can see the implant positions. But uh, again, let's put, pretend we're doing this on a patient. We have no idea where those things are going to end up. And that's the challenge, particularly in a freehand case, is that I can't pre-make holes for a pickup because I don't know where the implants are necessarily going to be. So instead, a really useful tool that I found is to turn this into just a shell denture. And that way I can load it full of acrylic. It's very easy to locate my cylinders wherever they're going to emerge in this. And then we'll pick it all up in acrylic and just salt and pepper on a little uh, pink acrylic or some gingival composite since this is for the temporary restoration. Okay, so in order to do this, if you'll notice right now, these are um, individual, what's known as face groups. You know, there's, it's one single STL, but it's an, one STL composed of a whole bunch of STLs. Each individual tooth, the gingival base. If I'm going to hollow this, which is what we're going to do, I need to first turn it all into one uniform solid. So in your edit menu, say make solid. It's going to have a really poor initial quality change the solid type from fast to accurate take your solid accuracy up to the very maximum and your density just increase to about halfway now let's update and now you see the difference now i'll accept this and you'll see that now if i were to go in and just click on an individual tooth it, it selects the whole thing this is no longer one STL made of a bunch of STLs. This is all just a single STL. Okay, so it's one contiguous shape. And in order to make a shell denture, what I'm now going to do is hollow this shape. So go to edit again and say hollow. And <clears throat> I don't want that thick of a wall to this. The default it's going to go to is two millimeter wall thickness. I'm going to change that to 0.75 and update it. Now when you look at this, do you see it's a much more uh, thin walled shape? And I don't want to have this, this shape become you know, filled with uncured composite or, or printing resin. So what I'm going to do is put in some drain holes. And since I am cheating here and I know where the implants are going to end up, I'm going to put a drain hole right on the top of each implant site. Okay, there. And all I'm doing is double clicking within this menu before hitting accept. Once I've got my drain holes, click accept. And as you see here, this has now been turned into a hollow shape. So um, what I'm going to do is just print this in this shape, and then it's very easy to take a handpiece and grind this out chair side because it's, it's 0.75 millimeters worth of resin to grind. It's very fast. Um, when you place your implants, only grind as far distal um, to open up a pickup uh, hole or a trough as far distal as your implants are. The remainder of this, flanges, buckle, lingual, the buckle shelf back here, all of that will be used to position this into space. So you would make uh, your trough on the underside for the implants to, to merge through. If they stick up tall enough that they go through the top side as well, you would make your little holes on this side. And then the way I do it is I just load this thing up with either tooth colored or clear ortho acrylic. And I just do the entire pickup uh, of the trilor bar and of the implant temporary cylinders within this and that just gives me a very little bit of um, chair side cleanup to do uh, to smooth up the underside remove anything that would keep this from being ovate and that would essentially be done so now we'll go back to the process of doing this on the lab model dust there. As you can see, by virtue of having this uh, just be so thin and just being a shell denture, it's very easy to pick this up now. 
Um, I typically make the flanges pretty wide because it's easy to trim back once everything is done. Uh, but if you make it really thin and contour, it's very difficult right off the bat. Okay, so I'm going to continue trimming this until we have this nice fitting shell denture that will drop right over the top of this. And then once we do, we're just going to screw the bar back in. Um, we'll make some little holes for our access with the acrylic, and then we'll just fill this whole shell denture with acrylic and pick this thing up in the mouth. All right, just used a couple of screws to secure this into place. Now, yet again, I'm working off of models, and so uh, some of this gets lost in the ability to not be showing this on a clinical patient, but you're going to get this thing where it's sitting passively. If I had, you know, the patient's opposing jaw, I'd have them close in. I'd make sure that the VDO is, is left unaltered, that everything's in the right place. I do see that this left side is still not seating completely, so I need to open it up just a bit more. Now, the last thing that's keeping this up is our cylinder locations. Okay, so we can try to find where those cylinders are. I'm just gonna eyeball this, because it's, again, it's gonna get closed up with acrylic, so it's not a tremendous loss if we uh, punch some holes through this. And by the way, the, the other cool thing about doing this is, man, you can print as many of these as you want. So if you totally screw one up, have three or four of them already printed and ready to go. Because it's so thin, it uses a very small amount of resin. So that's not a big concern. Let's open up a couple small spots here. Just barely punching through to reveal cylinder locations. Okay. Then this cylinder is right here. And now hopefully you can notice that this is, this is far less destructive than what you would typically have to do uh, if you were just converting the patient's denture. Usually that would be an enormous pickup. You'd have to remove a ton of acrylic and you'd have this giant trough to be working from. With this, it's not that big a deal. And we're trying our best to avoid um, making holes right on the teeth because the teeth are what's difficult to get smoothed back up and everything idealized. All right, so let's just mark where we need to stretch these holes to. And that one is up inside of the tooth, so we'll have to take out that area right there. And do you see now that this is sitting passively? A little easier to tell on an on a actual model than it is in the mouth, but it's the same general process. Just get this thing where it's sitting uh, com completely seated, where when they close down, the occlusion is matching up. Um, hopefully you've pre-marked your VDO before surgery so that you can now take your popsicle stick, make sure that they're still in the same VDO. So let's assume that we've done all that and that everything is in a good spot right now. Now, before I um, uh, go on and do the pickup here, let me tell you one other alternative uh, for this. If you don't mind doing a next day restoration, uh, you know, just sending the patient home, let them kind of heal up a little bit and delivering the restoration next day, then the better and cleaner way of doing this process is to now um, either take just a quick alginate um, or you can even use an intraoral scanner, which I'm gonna do, and take a scan of this because now with that you have a working model that you can now go in and just create an idealized digital denture right over the top that's going to have perfect path of draw that's going to go right onto the top of this and that one you could actually print in pink uh, and white so you end up with a better aesthetic um, uh, look to this and, and really and truly that I've seen be used as a definitive restoration and it looks excellent. Um, it, it looks incredibly good. Or alternatively, you could just do this as a monolithic 
this one's got some powder on it, but um, same idea. This was a monolithic one that's just had some acrylic salt and peppered, and the trilore is inside. So this one was made in that exact manner that I just described. It was a trilore bar like this, and then a hollowed uh, denture that perfectly fits over this because it was designed on a model of this. So now when you do the pickup of that, it's incredibly easy. There's just a tiny bit of acrylic or cement that's required, and then you come back and salt and pepper the underside. So I'll try to show that option as well uh, before proceeding on to do the pickup using the shell denture. Okay, so we're ready to do the pickup now. Um, I'm gonna do this with some acrylic, and so one thing I wanna make sure we do is not block ourselves out of the hole. And so what I'm doing right now is I am placing some Teflon tape inside of the access holes to protect them. And that way we can just fill the shell denture up with a, a wad of acrylic and not have to worry about blocking ourselves out um, once the pickup has been completed. Okay, so that took a second, but now we've got this um, <clears throat> all ready to do our pickup. And one other thing I'm going to do, simply because I'm working on a model, is I'm going to put on a releasing agent because I don't want the acrylic uh, bonding this thing to the model. In a mouth, obviously, that's not something you worry about. Okay, I'm going to mix up some acrylic. Okay, I didn't realize I was out of the liquid on that. So instead we're gonna punt and we're just gonna use denture repair acrylic. And so um, if I was really doing this in the mouth, this would for sure not be my preferred choice because it's going to be pink colored. And since my restoration is only 0.7, Thick, there would be the possibility of this showing through and uh, you know kind of messing up the aesthetics giving it a pink tint but for demonstration purposes just pretend that this is uh, tooth colored or clear acrylic so I'm gonna mix this up pretty doughy And I'm just going to let this sit up for a moment until it has the loss of gloss and uh, we can handle this by hand and uh, create a little hot dog of acrylic. We're almost there. Do you see now how when I bend it over it's sticking to the wad of acrylic as opposed to staying on the wall of the mixing bowl? That tells me we're awfully close. So I'm going to let that set up just another moment and as I am doing that, I'm gonna take some extra primer and I'm gonna put it all over the bar. And again, just in case you've lost sight of it, uh, I know it's a long video, but remember this would all be taking place in the mouth if you're doing this um, in order to generate an immediate load prosthetic. Now the reason for uh, making sure that this is all doughy prior to loading it is if you just stuck this in a syringe with it still being incredibly runny, it's just going to all run out the bottom side. It would make a giant mess, get in the patient's mouth, or in my case, all on the model and stick to everything. I want this to be fairly well controlled in how much of it I uh, have inside of the restoration and try to avoid all that excess run out. And now we can set that aside. And all I'm gonna do is make a hot dog out of this. 
drop that hot dog into the inside of this. And the goal is not to fill up every last little bit. The goal is just to pick up the overall bar and then we'll come back uh, because we need to encase this whole bar anyway. The goal here is just to attach the overall bar to this denture. Okay, so the fact that it's a little tacky here and uh, one other thing I can do is I can add a little excess monomer down in here so that it gets a good bond to the tooth material or the tooth colored material. And again, hopefully you would have the right acrylic on hand where this would either be clear or tooth colored. But alas, I do not. <clears throat> and you can see because of that, the red tinge that's coming through. All right. I'm going to let this set up a little bit, and right now is a great time to tease away any of that excess and re-expose your screw channels. And now we wait. So that's been allowed to set and now our acrylic has hardened up so I'm going to remove the couple of screws that are retaining this and we can look at it from the underside. And as you can see here, the acrylic has bonded the shell denture to the bar. And all that's left to do really at this point is to now begin trimming back borders. And then we can salt and pepper the underside of this to fully encase it. And that will essentially finish this procedure. And so now I'm gonna trim back our borders. So to finish this up, I'll just show you how I would salt and pepper this. And I'm not going to do the entire thing uh, because I think you'll, you'll get the basic gist of it. Um, it's just a matter of salt and peppering acrylic. You uh, definitely do not want to get acrylic down into your cylinders. So we're just going to take a paintbrush and fully encase this Trilor material. And it's not a bad idea, actually, to uh, go ahead and prime all this. You drain off the excess liquid, but that's going to help ensure a better overall bond of this stuff together. Okay, so we've encased it all now. We've salt and peppered the underside here. And what I'm gonna do is let this again set up until everything is tacky. And then I'm gonna go back and put this onto the model um, and let this harden up. And uh, that's going to shape the underside. That'll give it the final contour. And all that's left to do will be to salt and pepper these holes to make sure they're nice and clean and, and not a big gaping hole, but rather just a small screw channel. And then to deliver it in the mouth, adjust occlusion, and you could put a polish on it if you want. Um, but the overall point with this is that, you know, it's a chair side fabricated solution, uh, something that you can make for very affordably. These bars uh, can be purchased from Blue Sky Bio in packs of three, <clears throat> and they're pretty affordable. 
um, and they allow you to make something that's, uh, for all intents and purposes, that's going to be indestructible by the patient. Not to say they couldn't chip a tooth or something, although I've not seen that yet. But the big problem typically with uh, interim hybrids like this is that they break it catastrophically. They break it through and through, and there's just not a good way to recover from that other than to start over. So the little bit of extra time that you're going to invest in creating this is going to more than make up for itself uh, by not having these catastrophic breakages that can you know, very quickly remove all the profitability from your case. So uh, th as this gets tacky, I'll do the model separator one last time and then we'll screw this thing down onto our working model or into the mouth if you were really doing this procedure clinically. And I'm going to go ahead and get a screw here. And we'll tack all of these in, screw this down, making sure that this goes all the way in. And while that was hardening, you could actually come back and um, you know, clean up this screw access hole. This aspect I find easier to do with a uh, with a uh, bit of bonding agent and some composite. So I'm gonna put some bondo on here. And the way I avoid getting myself blocked out of my screw channel is to just make sure that I've got the screwdriver in here. And now I can go around this and add composite until this is smoothed over. Rinse and repeat, get all your holes closed up. And the last thing you'll have to do is after that uh, intaglio sets up, you can now go in and just polish back any concave areas, um, get this thing where it's fitting nice and flush to the tissue. Uh, rather than wait on that, I have one that I've made previously here. This was made out of a monolithic shell denture. Um, and you know we've picked up that trilor bar inside and here you can see where it's encased. And I've had several hundred people in multiple courses now try their hardest to break this and, and you simply can't. It, it cannot be broken. You can stretch it outward, you can squeeze on it. I've never tried standing on it, but I feel pretty confident that I would be able to. And all I've got invested in this is a 3D printed shell denture, which maybe cost under a dollar, a little salt and pepper acrylic, and the Trilor bar. That is it. And uh, there's no reason why this couldn't be a long-term um, affordable solution for patients. If they maybe can't afford your zirconia hybrid or whatever, uh, you can use this. And this should be a temporary that can last indefinitely until they are ready to convert, if they ever convert. So I um, hope that was helpful to you. And I'll try to make another video of some of the alternative methods of using this Trilor bar. But this would be the method I'd use for creating one that is chair side um, that you deliver on the day of surgery. Okay, just thought I'd show you the final result. Um, everything has been cured in. The uh, Trilor bar is sandwiched in there. Um, I've put a coat of what's called Nano Varnish. This is available from uh, Annex Dent. <clears throat> um, but everything is sealed up now. Access holes, as you can see, have been um, cleaned up. 
and the underside has been trimmed up so that it's ovate. And if I was to put this on the model, you can see now the contours. And the only thing lacking in this is that I was a big dummy and I, I used pink acrylic. I didn't realize because I was mid-video um, that I didn't have any more clear or tooth-colored acrylic. So you can see that on the lingual side, most of the shell has been completely trimmed away. I just barely exposed that trilor bar here on the corner. You see, try to get that to focus. Right there on the corner, that's just barely exposed, but the majority of this restoration is acrylic, with the exterior just being the 3D printed shell denture. And if that had been tooth colored acrylic, this would have come out looking much nicer. But that's the overall process. And again, very, very strong trying my hardest to squish and break this it's just not going to happen there's no way you can because that trilor material is way too strong